All right. Friends, change agents, resilient build, resilience builders, and transitioners, welcome to Unleashing the Collective Genius, celebrating 10 years of transition in the U.S., our first ever Transition U.S. online summit. My name is Nils Paulson. I serve as Communications Director for Transition U.S., National Hub of the Transition Towns Movement in the United States, and I'm honored to be here with you today as we celebrate a full decade of coming together to reimagine and rebuild our world. Whoop. <laughs> if you're among the 900 plus individuals tuning in for this live event today, including people gathered for 33 in-person watch parties uh, across North America, you probably need little introduction as to the Transition Towns movement and what it is. But if you'll permit me a humble few moments to weave some context, I would love to uh, kick off this live segment of this historic event with a few words on what I see us doing here. Um, first, next slide, uh, the transition movement is replete with cheerful disclaimers. Um, this is all just an experiment, a draft that's constantly being revised, everything is constantly in process, and even the most effective replicable model may need to be adapted significantly to be uh, appropriate in another setting. We're all busy people in a crazy world, battlefield midwives in constant triage, warriors of the light groping through the darkness to find and share the medicine. Humble, imperfect people doing our best to live and die well and doing our best to make a difference. Uh, one of my favorite cheerful disclaimers to share uh, whenever I give a transition talk is what I refer to as the one schmo hypothesis. It goes, a little, it goes a little something like this. We are in a nearly infinite multiverse in which each sentient being is her own world. Each of us is a complete and complex civilization containing vast multitudes. And each of these civilizations has its own language, beliefs, customs, and each is sovereign and equal in value. And each of us, therefore, is but one schmo in an infinite sea of schmoes. We all, we all have our beliefs and opinions of what's right, uh, and what's right for one schmo may not be right for another. So I find this one schmo hypothesis very useful in the transition movement because even among the many kindred human beings making up this movement, Transition is a word with many different meanings. We're transitioning from oil dependence to community resilience, from isolated disempowerment to shared agency, from passive consumption to active co-creation. We're transcending the carbon economy, climate chaos, peak oil, economic instability, empire, anomy, and building a future that is thriving, just, abundant, connected, and ultimately preferable to the present paradigm. Word. Word. <laughs> Some current metrics from this movement. Over 1,200 initiatives exist worldwide in 50 countries and 13 languages. This includes 164 in the U.S. across 37 states. And as we go about the work and play of doing transition, I believe we do well to remember that we are moving in solidarity with people all around the world. Indeed, if we make lowercase the T in transition, we find that there are so many organizations of people working together to address the crises we face and to make the world more awesome that we literally can't count them. The wider movement engages in tactics ranging from writing elected officials and actually running for office to demonstrating in the streets and practicing dis civil disobedience along pipeline routes to perhaps the most radical act of all, staying home and growing food and sharing it with neighbors. You may not need to hear this next bit. You may be among the distinguished transition luminaries in the field, next slide anytime, um, who, who's been with this movement from the beginning, uh, you may be one of the participants joining us here today who could practically write a book on transition, or indeed, perhaps you already have. Uh, but this, for the Mullers out there, the budding transition initiative, the would-be transitioner, the conscious and curiosity peaked college student, the working parent concerned about the world we're passing on to our kids and not quite sure what this whole transition thing is all about, the retired activist, who has seen and done it all, and who is ready to trade in the cleverness of curmudgeonly pessimism for the bewilderment of radical can-do possibility, I offer a few words on how this one schmo sees transition. We are a movement of people coming together to reimagine and recreate our world. Yeah, a vibrant network of human beings working together to bring our world back into a state of harmony, equity, thriving resilience. In a world where economic and governmental policy agenda is most often set by multinational, multi-billion dollar corporations and politicians who can most generously be described as questionable, 
Uh, we come together locally on the scale of the lived and take action with people we can see and on earth we can feel beneath our feet at, uh, at a, a level that makes a real difference in the lives of those around us. The transition is for this one schmo, a vehicle, uh, a context for empowered local action and expression, next slide, of permaculture that is social permaculture, holistic design at the community level. And now these next slides are gonna be pretty rapid fire because our local work includes, but is not limited to, next, building up local food infrastructure that is healthy, organic, and accessible to all, next slide, protecting local watersheds, cultivating strong local economies, next, I should have said, uh, and then next again, climate <laughs> adaptation and alternate energy, Next, local transportation, getting around without the need of cities built around cars. Next, the, vatical, the vast world of inner transition. Next, reskilling ourselves and our communities. And next, emergency preparedness, housing, health, education, youth, elders, arts, media, and so much more. Next slide. One of my favorite descriptions I've heard of the transition movement recently is transition is hope with its sleeves rolled up. It really is a joy for this one schmo to roll up my sleeves with you all. And uh, really quickly, before I pass the mic, I just wanna take a moment to thank today's many presenters and participants, all those who have organized watch parties around the country, and everyone who has spent time with us on a Saturday uh, to join together with fellow resilience builders to strengthen this movement. Uh, and now it is my uh, pleasure to introduce an individual whose grassroots transition organizing has inspired many of us over the years with his amazing work with Transition Sarasota and who has proven invaluable to our national resilience building movement as Transition US co-director. Here to share about some of the current projects we're working on, upcoming trainings and webinars, and the imminent publication of our new book, 10 Stories of Transition in the US. It's my great honor to welcome Don Hall. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, Nils. Um, yeah, I don't have the same kind of cheering section in the background. Uh, it sounds like there's a great group there in Sebastopol. Um, so yeah, I'm going to tell you about a few projects that I've been working on over the past year or so. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues Caroline Staten and Marissa Momarts to tell you a little bit more about a few other uh, things that we've got cooking. Uh, but here we'll start with uh, 10 stories of transition in the U.S. Uh, with support and guidance uh, from our board president and longtime uh, board member, founder of Transition Houston, Mark Judeman. Uh, we embarked on this 10 stories of transition project uh, earlier this year. Uh, and we have currently posted nine stories uh, to the Transition US website, which are currently available at transitionus.org uh, slash stories. Uh, so our first one was Transition Sarasota's Suncoast Gleaning Project, which some of you might have heard about in the Inspiring and Replicable Models panel earlier. Uh, also on that panel, our second story, uh, the spread of repair cafes. I know we have a lot of people on this call from Transition Twin Cities, and our third story was on their uh, Grove of Life that they put on at the Northern Spark Festival last year, the fantastic uh, awareness raising engagement project. Uh, we'll hear a little bit later from, more from uh, Transition Town Media uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, which was our fourth story on the evolution of Transition Town Media. Uh, we also have folks here from Woodstock, New York Transition. We profiled their working group support in story number five. Um, we've heard a little bit about uh, local investment today. And one of the uh, most impressive projects uh, in the country, uh, helping to facilitate local investment into local social, entre uh, social enterprises, is Local 2020's Local Investing Opportunities Network, which was our sixth story. Our seventh story uh, comes from Transition Milwaukee, how they helped to uh, incubate and nurture the Victory Gardens initiative there, uh, which has planted over 4,000 gardens throughout the city of Milwaukee uh, since its inception. 
Uh, story number eight uh, about uh, the uh, building community with transition streets and all the uh, communities around the country that have been using uh, the transition streets program to uh, build neighborhood resilience. And story nine, which just came out last week, uh, is about transition Fidalgo and Friends Vision 2030, uh, which is probably uh, yeah one of the handful of examples of an energy descent action plan uh, that we have here in the U.S. Uh, and finally, our tenth story will be on uh, social justice and diversity in transition, uh, which you've heard a little bit about and will be hearing more about today. Uh, so on the left is just a, a mock-up of what the eventual publication will be, uh, but that should be coming out uh, before the end of the year, both in print and online. Uh, so do check it out on the website now. Uh, next, I want to talk a little bit about webinars, uh, just very briefly. Uh, on the left, you can see one that's coming up on November 14th. Uh, these are free. Uh, monthly sessions, uh, usually 90 minutes to two hours, uh, featuring uh, some great model or speaker uh, from the community resilience building field here in the U.S. and worldwide. On the right, you can see uh, a number of examples uh, from the past year of different webinars that we've offered. Uh, and on the bottom of the slide, you can see a link to our YouTube channel uh, where a lot of the recordings of these past webinars are held. Uh, and there's a lot of them, and they're a really tremendous resource. So if you haven't picked up on these yet, uh, please do. Uh, next, I want to talk a little bit about training courses. Uh, this is the aspect of Transition US that I'm probably most involved in. Um, and we have uh, six that I want to run you through very briefly here uh, right now. We have Transition Launch, uh, which uh, started uh, back in the UK. It was originally called Training for Transition. Many of you may have participated in this course. Uh, we recently started offering it online. Uh, and our second round of Transition Launch online training uh, is currently in its uh, sixth week, uh, going on our seventh week. Um, and we will continue to offer this both online and in person. Uh, we also have a transition talk training uh, that has only been offered in person so far. We may offer it online in the future, uh, especially if you tell us that you would like it. Uh, it's mainly around how to deliver a good transition presentation. Um, but also covers just how do we talk about transition in general, in particular to uh, diverse audiences who have different perspectives on what we do. Uh, effective collaboration, uh, two-day in-person training and six-week online training. Uh, we just wrapped up our first round of that uh, and we'll likely be offering another one uh, starting in May of next year. Uh, coming up in January, uh, we have a Think Resilience course with Post Carbon Institute uh, and Richard Heinberg. Uh, registration just opened uh, this morning. I just posted it to the Transition US website. Uh, so you can go and check that out now. And there's actually a $25 off coupon code uh, that's there on our website for transition members. Uh, that will be a seven week course connecting the material uh, specifically to community resilience building at the local level. And we are uh, currently developing Transition Thrive Online uh, for the first time. Uh, and the first online version of that course will be offered in March. Um, this is thanks to a generous grant from the International Transition Network. Uh, and you can think of this course as a sequel uh, to Transition Launch Training for those of you who have taken that. Uh, finally, we have other courses like uh, the Skilling Up for Local Economic Resilience that Jay Taunt uh, offered at our national gathering last year. Our Inner Resilience Network is currently considering uh, creating an inner resilience training. 
uh, and we can create other trainings based on what people are interested in and what you feel would be helpful. So please do let us know. Uh, finally, I'll say a few words about national gatherings. Uh, you might not realize it, but you are at one today. Um, we did our first in-person uh, national gathering in the Twin Cities uh, last year, last summer, uh, and it was fantastic. Uh, special shout out to Twin Cities transitioners who really made this event possible. Uh, we had around 300 people attend. We had all sorts of workshops and intensives and keynotes and uh, open space discussions, bioregional breakouts, and a movement strategy summit. And as Nils said, uh, our second national gathering will be coming up uh, in 2019 in Pittsburgh uh, next summer. And uh, we'll be followed by a movement strategy summit specifically focusing on bridging community resilience and social justice movements. Uh, so do keep that in mind when you're making your summer plans. Uh, and if you want to look back at our last national gathering, uh, a lot more information, including uh, recordings from that national gathering, uh, will be back up on transitiongathering.org very shortly. Uh, and last, I just want to very quickly, but uh, very Gratefully thank our sponsor for this event, Abundant Earth Foundation, uh, which is a fairly new organization started up this year uh, by longtime permaculturalist Hannah Eckberg uh, and is funding great permaculture projects around the world and events like this one. Uh, so really do check them out at AbundantEarthFoundation.org. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to my co-director, Caroline Staten, uh, at the Sebastopol Watch Party in Sebastopol, California, uh, to tell us a little bit more about uh, Transition Streets and Ready Together and other social cohesion neighborhood organizing projects. So over to you, Caroline. Thank you. Whew, uh, this is very exciting. Um, so I'm going to touch on three social cohesion projects. And we're calling them that because in the process of actually doing these projects, you build social cohesion on your neighborhood level. So the first one is Transition Streets, next slide. And we adapted this in 2015 from the Transition Network, so we were, are not the brainchild of this. And just wanna give kudos to them for all of their hard work and to our team for adapting it and uh, to the people who piloted it. Some are in this room, <laughs> yay. And um, we have a website, transitionstreets.org, where you can get facilitation guides, outreach guides, uh, an animated video that is made by um, an Oscar nominated uh, graphic artist and the handbook itself. So please take a look and move forward with that project and let us know what you find out and what we can share. The next slide, um, we have three different versions of Transition Streets. The original that I just talked about, Transition Streets on a Budget, that focuses on low cost or no cost actions and Transition Streets Water Saving Edition that will be coming out in um, January 2019. Uh, next slide. So it works by getting a small cluster of neighbors together and going through a user-friendly handbook uh, with Transition Streets, you can save up to $1,000 on household bills and 1.3 tons of carbon per year. And again, you're building community and building that social cohesion. Next slide. And here's just a sample. It's very beautifully laid out, lots of graphics, lots of images, lots of tips. So please uh, take a look and adapt it. Use one chapter, use them all. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to hearing from you if you want to do that. 
The next slide, um, we're going to be launching Ready Together, and it's an emergency response handbook that near neighbors do together. Similar in process, you get together with your near neighbors, you go through a user-friendly handbook. And in this case, when you are in your water chapter, you'll tell participants that you're gonna get water together for one week, two weeks, or three weeks. And by the time you meet again, you've actually done that. You do the next chapter and you get your neighborhood plan in place, um, et cetera. So uh, we'll be piloting that in the spring and launching it more broadly after that. So if you are interested in being a pilot, let me know. Um, you can email me at caroline at transitionus.org or just email info at transitionus.org. Thanks. And the last thing, boy, these time limits, man, oh man. <laughs> uh, the last thing that I want to talk about in terms of uh, building social cohesion is the Stories to Action project. And we began this when Post Carbon Institute Shareable and News Stories, we put our heads together and thought, God, there's so many disasters. What can we do? How can we get people prepared ahead of time? And what can we learn from how people are responding to disasters? <laughs> So we put together um, Shareable and, uh, and Post Carbon Institute worked on a podcast series, which is available on the responsepodcast.org. And New Stories in Transition US held a learning cohort over six months. And the purpose was to help people get a vision of what they want to do in their communities to build resilience pre and post disaster and learn from each other and put those ideas into place, implement them. So that's what we worked on over six months. And I'm happy to say that a number of projects got birthed, online toolkit, an apartment dwellers organizing her complex, um, the Earth Grief Project, which is seeding conversations about collective grief with the hope to be offering it on college campuses, uh, food resilience project that's working with the Food Policy Council in Asheville, and Cycling Without Age, which is helping seniors gain mobility. And my time is up. And what I, what I, what I want to say is a lot of the work we want to do is on collaboration, so I'm going to turn it over to Marissa Momartz, who's going to talk to us about some collaborative projects. Marissa. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. Just waiting to get unmuted. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm the Director of Programs at Transition US. I'm based out of Paonia, Colorado, and I'm going to start by telling you about some of the work we at Transition US are doing to build a stronger, more resilient, and interconnected transition movement in the US. As the transition movement continues to grow and deepen, we're seeing an increasing need for, as well as interest in organizing at various scales, including regional, national, and international. For years, Transition US has been exploring and experimenting with organizing structures that would enhance communication and resource flows at all levels of the movement and better connect the US transition movement with the international transition movement which is a robust learning network that now exists in more than 50 countries around the world. In 2015, we launched the Collaborative Design Council, a national advisory group comprised of transition leaders from across the country, which you'll hear about more later in this presentation. The Collaborative Design Council then catalyzed our first national gathering and movement strategy session in St. Paul, Minnesota last summer. Building upon all of this momentum, Transition US is now stewarding the development of an organizing framework for our national network, which clarifies and enhances the relationships between local transition initiatives, Transition US, and emerging organizing bodies, including regional hubs, national working groups, and the Collaborative Design Council. Our intention is to co-create agile, supportive organizing structures that will strengthen all levels of the transition movement in the US by creating the conditions for transition leaders across the country to connect, 
build relationships, share ideas and resources, collaborate on projects, and more. And in alignment with transition values, one of the most important questions we're considering in this framework is how to ensure that regional and national levels of movement organizing are owned and directed by the grassroots, rather than being top down. This project is still in the early phases of gathering best practices from the international level of transition and from other organizations, enterprises, and social movements and compiling a working draft framework, which we will then share with all of the local transition initiatives for input. And if you have skills and experience in network design and would like to help with this process, please contact me, marissa at transitionus is my email, transitionus.org. At the same time we're developing this framework, Transition US is also supporting the emergence of regional hubs in areas including the Mid-Atlantic, Northern California, Pacific Northwest, New England, Minneapolis, Twin Cities area, and more, each of which are operating at varying geographic scales and stages of development. And in addition, we're supporting and collaborating with several new national level working groups, including the Inner Resilience Network and the Social Justice Working Group, both of which you'll hear from shortly, as well as the Regional Hubs Group, which I would like to is, is Shari on the line? Do we know? I don't think so. Not okay. Yet. Well, then I'll go ahead and tell you about the Regional Hubs Group. Um, the Regional Hubs Working Group meets monthly to connect, share ideas, resources, best practices, and challenges related to strengthening the transition movement in our respective regions, organizing at the regional level and building the capacity of regional hubs. We're also exploring the possibility of de developing collaborative projects in partnership with Transition US, including regional trainings and an internship program. So if you're currently working on or are interested in starting a hub in your region and want to participate in this group, um, email me to learn more. Great. And the last national level working group I want to tell you more about is our Reconomy Community of Practice, a group of local transition and community resilience organizers that meets bi-monthly to connect and learn together about transforming our local economies, to keep wealth and resources local, to protect and regenerate ecosystems, respect workers, and build commonwealth while creating a higher quality of life for all. Reconomy is an area of transition that's increasingly gaining traction within the international movement as more and more people realize that the scale of change we transitioners envision is not possible without dramatically shifting our economy. So in the past year, the Reconomy community of practice has hosted speakers on alternative currencies, local investment vehicles, and more, and we're open to inviting speakers on whichever topics are of most interest to participants. We also have an online economy resource guide and a report, 25 Enterprises That Build Resilience. There's also an international economy group that hosts free online trainings. If you're interested in learning more about economy or participating in the economy community of practice, please visit the Transition US website or contact me. Thank you. So next, I will turn it over to are we going to Jewel now or? Yes, great, Jewel is there. I saw some chat happening. So um, next I'll turn it over to Julia Bystrova of Sebastopol, California to share about the work of the Inner Resilience Network, one of the emerging national working groups I mentioned earlier. Hi everybody. Thanks so much for having this uh, moment here to share with you. Last year at the first National Transition Convergence, an idea whose time was uh, whose time has come was launched, a national group and network that focuses on the inner dimension of our changing and challenging times, building on the great inner transition or heart and soul type work already rich in so many of our communities. We needed a scaled up version, uh, an immune response, if you will, to our collective ills. At the Convergence, I met Rebecca Blanco and she resonated with this vision as well. And so we agreed to join up and are now midwifing this effort which currently consists of people all across the country with many of the esteemed uh, leaders watching here today. And we invite others to join us who also hold this vision, whether you are part of transition or not. Um, 
So briefly, the vision can be expressed this way. Uh, a network that exists to connect us in a way that we can grow and receive what we need um, to respond more effectively to the psychological, physical, spiritual, and existential crisis that accompanies the escalating challenges in our world today. A place where we seek ways to support each other in being the resilient, courageous, and, and nourished human being, working to bring op positive options to uh, humanity. We also explore uh, ways we can ripple this effect through the local communities of our members, all who are leaders, facilitators, activists. In this way, we seek to create a stronger and a wider web of care and resource. This web then is available to both give to and receive from. Inner resilience is also about interpersonal resilience, which is the bridge between our inner life and how that affects the way we show up in the world. So in this way, we invite ways of deepening our relationships with each other and weaving these joyful threads in this web. We are currently expressing this vision uh, by meeting online monthly in what we call a deep dive conversation where we explore topics that are alive for us and we lean in and listen deeply to each other in ways that we often don't have time for in our busy lives and meetings. The conversation is open to members who join our Google group and you should see the link right there. Um, and we are having our next one tomorrow actually and the theme will be on gender and healing, a timely subject. Uh, in addition, we are launching a webinar series uh, and that will be open to the public with vital topics and guest speakers. We are also organizing an in-person retreat uh, to be held next spring. We are compiling a best practices handbook and a template and trainings for local inner resilience circles. We invite all of you to join us, any one that resonates with this vision, to come to contribute your ideas, your energy, and your leadership. So together, we can be the immune response. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jill. Um, and next, I'd like to introduce Alisa Miles of Transition Town Media, Pennsylvania, and Theo Talcott of Transition Manchester, Vermont, to share about the Social Justice Working Group. Hi everyone, this is Alesa, and we are announcing the formation of the Social Justice Working Group, all formed with people all over the country. And it became very clear in our national gathering last year that there is a national level need for us to organize our efforts in bridging social justice with community resilience work. Um, so welcome, and I'll pass it off to Theo to tell you about our purpose. Next slide. Yeah, I'm not sure if Theo's here. I don't see his name in the list of participants. So Theo, if you're uh, <laughs> hiding in disguise under somebody else's name, please let us know by typing that into the chat and we'll unmute you. Otherwise, I would say, uh, Alisa, just keep rolling. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our purpose is multifaceted. We seek to increase awareness and, and acknowledge and recognize the legacy of historical inequity and oppression in our world, as well as to deepen our awareness, to, to think intersectionally, and to, to begin to develop new patterns, new skills for how we relate with each other. We also seek to imagine and, and to, to realize what a just world looks like and to find that and reach for it in ourselves, in our communities, and across our whole world. And we also seek to make social justice efforts a key part of transition, just as, as well as uh, fossil fuel use reduction and climate change efforts and economic efforts, because all of these efforts are integral and interconnected and depend on each other. We do see this social justice work as part of a wider movement of movements, and we seek to bring healing to our collective wounds. Um, and next slide, please. And I do want to say that Theo is now here. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, Theo. <laughs> Theo? Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. If you could speak up a little bit more. That'd be great. Uh, 
Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, technical difficulties here. Um, it's precious to be a justice seeking people and we can be working for all these things we want at the same time. And in fact, we're stronger when we do that. So um, there's been a brewing conversation in the transition movement about how to incorporate uh, social justice uh, demands and how, and how to make the Black Lives Matter uh, demands um, part of the transition movement also say, how do we bring safety for people here where we live. Um, so we've been talking about that and the couple, we've had this sort of working up a letter of intention about that. And also, you know, we wanna say that we're on Turtle Island. This is indigenous land that we're on. So as we're a post-colonialist settler society, we say we wanna remember our ancestors who were in where we live, we're called the Abenaki. And I encourage you to remember your uh, local indigenous people if you can support them. Some of them are still around. Some in, in Vermont, they're in hiding from persecution in the early part of the century, often quite laying low still. But um, anyway, maybe um, I'll speak back to Alicia. Okay. And um, if we could go to our last slide. We'd like to welcome you all to join us. If you are dedicated and devoted to social justice concerns as part of our work in imagining and uh, creatively finding our way to an, uh, a new kind of living, a new way of being, uh, please join us. Our main work right now, our main efforts are around planning and organizing for next year's in-person national gathering, which will be in Pittsburgh. And we're very excited about that. And the theme will be bridge, something about bridging community resilience with social justice. And so um, our calls are on Zoom, usually monthly at least. And um, we look forward to having more of you join us from around the country to really raise up and lift up the importance of social justice work um, as, as essential to doing transition. Theo? And transition will be stronger when we've incorporated this analysis. It's, you know, we're like now in the climate emergency together and we're going to have to stick together. So like the way Puerto Rico was responded to had racism baked into it. And uh, so we just have to think that, you know, as Lakota teaches, we, we want to be relatives together. As we go into this crisis, let's stick together in the heart. And it means being like hip to you know the oppression that's afoot and uh not being afraid to name it and also we work to you know put the best foot forward anyway um thanks all right peace back alicia and uh, join our work the phone calls are really interesting we're working it up uh it's not a finished baked in thing if you are called to this work we'd love to have um i will say that the the national team has done a great job at organizing calls. It's been really fun to be on these calls. The inner resilience call tomorrow afternoon will probably be really interesting. Some of those uh, conversations about grief really taught me a lot about like what we're up against as we all try and wake up in the middle of this crisis together. And um, so appreciate all of you guys for organizing that. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and now I'm gonna hand it back over to our host for this session, Nils. Yay, right on. Uh, thank you so much, Alesa, Theo, Jewel, Marissa, Don, uh, Caroline, everybody who has supported in making this gathering so enlivening and so much fun so far. So as you, as you can see from all that's been shared today, uh, Transition US has a very storied history, maybe a little more storied than some of us uh, <laughs> ever, ever knew. Uh, and there's also um, not, not just very much alive and well, but, but growing and broadening and deepening and scaling up in some, some really beautiful and remarkable ways. Uh, just a few other recent metrics to share uh, from this last decade. Since 2009, over 3,000 people have participated in in-person on-site trainings, uh, over 125 on-site trainings. More than 10,000 people have been uh, participating in our webinars, 60,000 plus re viewed recordings, uh, including uh, over 7,500 live stream participants. Uh, we've supported 164 official transition initiatives 
in 30 states. And that's to say uh, nothing of the countless more unofficial transition inspire, inspired projects. Uh, over the last three years, we've launched Transition Streets, Neighborhood Energy, Water, and Waste Reduction Project. Uh, we've uh, had volunteer hours exceeding 2,700 hours, which is equivalent to 67 and a half weeks of volunteer service. Um, we've also published the Reconomy Report, 25 Enterprises That Build Community Resilience. Uh, we hosted the Transition US National Gathering last summer, which was amazing, and Movement Strategy Session. We've co-created the Collaborative Design Council, convened our first Stories to Action Learning Cohort, our first ever online trainings, uh, we begin, we've begun work on Ready Together, the Neighborhood Emergency Preparedness Manual. And now, thanks to all of you, we've convened our first online summit. So it's really, yeah, it's, it's, it's happening for us right now. Um, looking ahead to 2019, we plan to, next slide, uh, pilot and launch the Transition Streets Water Saving Edition, Transition Streets on a Budget, and Ready Together Emergency Preparedness Handbook. Uh, we will be developing and piloting Transition Thrive Training uh, to help transition initiatives deepen their impact. Uh, we will be deepening organizational collaborations with Post Carbon Institute, New Stories, Shareable, Eco Districts, and many other strategic partners. Uh, we will be coordinating a 2019 National Gathering and Movement Strategy Session in Pittsburgh next summer, so please join us for that on building bridges between community resilience and social justice. And uh, we continue to support the Collaborative Design Council, social justice working group, inner resilience working group, regional hubs, Reconomy community of practice, and so many other uh, fantastic projects that are shaping up. We will also be launching, next slide, our new website in the coming year. And we have a standing invitation out now to transition community members uh, in the short run to join us in testing and perfecting this new website. If you wanna join us, uh, email info at transitionus.org. Before it's public launch, we've got uh, hundreds of pages of uh, content already up so we're, we're testing it and getting it ready to roll out uh, and in the long run we're inviting you all to join us in forming an ever more robust community of writers bloggers photographers speakers filmmakers and content creators to uh, demonstrate the impact of transition around the country uh, so please get in touch with us and, and share all the things that's going on in your amazing initiatives out there uh, with us so we can we can distribute it to the wider network uh, between our website and social media presence, we're cultivating an online community that is robust, decentralized, and increasingly effective in reflecting this movement to itself, and also sharing inspiring stories from the field to promote transition to the wider community, uh, including the media landscape out there, so we can get transition out there to the proverbial hundredth monkey, uh, because this, work, you know, <laughs> this work needs to get out there, and I think we all know that. Um, so we're, we're, we're forming uh, an unstoppable movement around the world. And when, if not now, would be the time to do this. Uh, as you're probably aware, according to a recent report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, we have 12 years to really turn things around in order to avert outright climate catastrophe. Uh, and that's, that's alongside with all these other interconnected struggles that we face as a people right now. So it's on us right now, it's an opportunity uh, to be conscious beings working together here today and really come together and scale up this movement to build a livable, thriving, abundant, and just future for all. Uh, so just a little teaser over the next couple of weeks and into the, into the uh, winter here, Transition US will be uh, beginning our year-end fundraising campaign. As you may be aware, most uh, nonprofits like Transition US derive a substantial portion of our yearly operating costs from year the year-end fundraising season. Um, it's great that there's so much volunteerism in this movement, and then also we're, we're attempting to keep the lights on. So as we bring this historic online summit to a close, I just want to uh, send a grateful invitation to our viewers and par participants out there to join in our uh, year-end year fundraising efforts to sustain this movement, uh, either by making an online donation of whatever you can afford right now at transitionus.org, uh, or pledging to contribute during our winter fund drive. Um, make a donation or you could also make a donation today at your local transition initiatives watch party if you happen to be at one so um, as much as the uh, currency of money represents currents of energy and help us to pay the bills uh, I also want to say that we're about much more than that so you know I want to encourage any other form of energetic support you may authentically have within you to support this movement uh, at a local regional national level keep organizing keep doing awesome things in your community Keep uniting with allies in your bioregion to amplify your impact. And remember that Transition US is here to support you and build with you. 
Uh, so keep on participating in our webinars and trainings, our national network calls. Please share your stories and photos with us on our website. Please connect with us on social media and please help direct volunteers and interns from your community uh, into this great work of our time. And with that, I would like to share just a final word of thanks to all those convened here today around the country and in person and these 33 watch parties right here in Sebastopol and everywhere else. Thank you all so much for being amazing resilience builders. And uh, once again, thanks to the, uh, those who came before us and all the giants of love on whose shoulders we stand today. So much, much respect and appreciation to you all. Thank you. Woo! Thank <laughs> you.